Hey, teachers and parents, and welcome to Math Unlocked, where I get to offer you strategies for teaching math for grades three, four, and five. My name is Miss McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for you and your students. That way you can support the students that you work with. In today's episode, I will break down some division strategies at a third grade level. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it and let me teach ya. So like I said, we're talking about third grade division strategies. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six strategies that we'll be working with today. Now, when I'm finished with this page, it's going to be completely marked up with all kinds of strategies. And this might seem very overwhelming to you and maybe even to your students. So my suggestion is just kind of try to make sense of the strategies that I'm presenting here. And the whole goal is to have our students arrive at a method that works for them. So when they're dividing, it's important for us to teach different strategies and then for that and then for our students to lock in to a strategy that works for them. Okay, not to overwhelm, but to focus on learning a few strategies and seeing what works for them. All right, so let's go ahead. All righty. So, let's talk about some division vocabulary. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in on our expression first. So 24 is our total. It's the total amount that we will be dividing into groups of six when we get to there, okay? But the, the total has a special name. And in my division song, one of the lyrics is, what's the total called, y'all? Dividend. So the total, 24, is called our dividend. Dividend, and that is the total. Okay. Now we're taking that total and we're splitting it into equal groups. We're distributing evenly or equally. So we have a known number. This is called our divisor. It's the one that's actually doing the dividing. Okay. And we are trying to figure out the unknown, which is the answer. And what's the answer called y'all? Quotient. Rocking that division vocab, vocab. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. All right, so dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient. Cool. Let's get into some strategies here. So first let's figure out the amount in each group. So 24 total divided by six, and we're trying to find the amount in each group. So we're trying, our answer will be the number in each group. So in this case, our six is going to be the number of groups. So we have our total of 24, that's our dividend divided by six, that will be our groups to figure out the quotient, which is the things in each group. So let's go ahead and draw six groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, there's six groups. And what I will do is take that total of 24 and distribute equally. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna distribute little tally marks, organized tally marks into these groups until I arrive at my total of 24. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Again, I just stopped at 12, but I'm going until I get to 24. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Notice how I've made my tally marks nice and organized. We don't really want students to be doing this all over the place because a little dot we might confuse as a tally mark, but if we keep it nice and organized, we're less likely to make a mistake there. And of course, when I get to five, which we're not in this case, I'll make that slash to make it easy to identify five. How many tally marks did we have in each group? Four, right? In this group, we have four. In this group, four, 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 and four. So we had four things in each group. That's how you can find the amount in each group. That's one strategy. All right, now let's take 24 and this time find the number of groups. So we're saying 24 total divided by six things in each. 
And this time we're trying to find the number of groups. Okay, which is again, our quotient. That's the answer to a multiple. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's not. That's an answer to a division problem. All right, so we have six in each. So now watch how this strategy is a little bit differently. So we're trying to find the number of groups. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a group. Again, I'm taking my divisor here of six and putting six things in each group and then making the group. And we'll repeat that until we arrive at 24. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Stopping right there. And notice how my um, groups are nice and organized with my tallies, right? It was easy for me to go ahead and count six because of the way that I was organizing my tally marks. If you, again, if your students are throwing those tally marks all over the place, they're going to get confused. I've seen it happen again and again. All right, so how many groups did we have? We had four groups, right? Group one, group two, group three, and group four. So four groups. Now, when we're comparing the, for these two strategies that we've done, the divisor has taken on a different role for each one. And the first problem right here, the divisor was the number of groups. And the second one over here, our divisor was the amount in each group. So the divisor for division can change when you're not given a word problem that you're working with. If you're just trying to figure it out, you kind of have the option to decide do you want to draw six groups and then spread them out? Or do you want to draw groups of six and spread them out that way? Moving on to repeated subtraction on a number line. Well, let's go ahead and get a number line here and not forget my expression. 24 divided by six equals our quotient. We know it's going to be equal to four, but let's use this strategy to get there. And you might be saying, what repeated subtraction? I thought that we were dividing. We are, subtraction and division are related because division is technically repeated subtraction. Just like multiplication and addition are related because multiplication is also repeated addition. So let me show you what's happening here. Um, I'm gonna be honest, this is not my favorite strategy, but it's important that we're able to understand what's happening, okay? So for this one, I'm actually going to make so, so 24, I'm sorry, is going to be the total. That's gonna be how far we go. So we're starting right here at 24 on our number line. And I'm gonna count back with jumps of six, okay? Here is a jump of six, and we're trying to figure out how many jumps. We should have four jumps, right? So let's see, if I'm, going backwards then, and I'm subtracting six, so 24 minus six minus six is 18. Keep subtracting again, minus six, make a jump of six going backwards, that would be 12. 12 minus six, that's six, and six minus six, yay, we made it to zero, which is what we're trying to do there. Minus six there. So how many jumps did we have? We had jump one, jump two, jump three, and jump four. So four jumps there. And that's how you can model um, division as repeated subtraction on a number line. Moving on, let's see what we got next. A reverse array. Okay, so really, you're gonna say, you might be saying reverse array, what do you mean? I don't even know if that's a technical term, I'm just writing that there. <laughs> um, and so we're gonna have 24 total. And I get to decide for an array because an array has columns and rows. I get to decide, do I, want, do I want my six to be the number of columns or the number of rows? So I'm actually gonna make the six the number of col uh, rows going down, okay? So that means this, my quotient, will be the number across. So watch, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six going down, and I'm going to continue to um, throw circles into that array to create an array of 24 total. So I have six, 
This would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, keep going. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Cool, so we had six rows going down and how many are in each row? Four, right? Each row going across has four. Another way that you could do that would be to have or one, two, three, four, five, six going across and then counting up until we get to 24. 23, 24. Cool. And this is just an array that's been turned over there. They are both modeling this problem the same. Okay, so let me just show that this is being modeled here. And this would be the number going across, which would equal four. Okay. Now, a lot of students, they like the array method and drawing groups of equal things. So um, just like I cautioned you with the tallies for the number of groups and the number in each group that we've already done, for the arrays, what you need to make sure that you're warning your students about is that sometimes they like to get, they don't line them up totally where they can see and they start to get really scrunchy and it's not modeling a nice rectangular shape. So really practice having them draw it out so that it's nice and neat. All right, reverse array. Now let's practice skip counting to the total, this strategy. This is a strategy that I highly recommend once your students understand what division is. Skip counting to the total, and I'm going to do this using the multiplication mashup. 24 divided by six equals what? We know it's going to be four. Um, and the, by the way, the multiplication mashup is a song that I created several years ago and uh, it helps students to practice skip counting. So once they understand what multiplication is and what division is, they're able to use this song, this song to skip count quickly. So what I'm gonna do is count by sixes until I get to a total of 24. So I'm using my six song in the multiplication mashup, which goes like this. Hey sixes, I just met ya. You're kinda crazy. Six, 12, and 18. 24, right there, I'm holding four fingers up. I got to 24, I counted by sixes four times and got to 24. And it sounded like this, six, 12, 18, 24. It's technically using multiplication as with an unknown factor, okay? Definitely check out the multiplication mashup if you have not already, and um, I'll link that in this video too. All right, so now a next strategy, rewrite as a missing factor problem. So we just did this, sort of, but let's make it official here. Okay, we know that 24 divided by six equals a number. We know it's gonna be four, but the way that we can get there is to reverse it. So to say, to, to kind of go backwards here, let me show you. So if we're taking it backwards, we would be writing the missing factor Inverse operation is multiplication, so times six equals 24. Again, if I'm rewriting that, it would be the missing factor times six equals 24. And sometimes when students see it as multiplication, they make better sense of it there. You could also say that six times something equals 24. Again, if we use the multiplication mashup, 6, 12, and 18, 24, four times. So four times six equals 24. Groovy. All right, y'all, so there are a bunch of division strategies for you today. I told you I was gonna mark up all over. And again, please do not stress your students out by showing them all of these strategies at once, okay? Focus on a couple that you can present to them, maybe focusing on one each day until they start to click. And then what I like to do after I've kind of exposed them to a bunch of different strategies, I like to present a problem like, what's 45 divided by nine? How many different ways can we solve this problem? So students can write down the strategy that they like on their paper and solve it 
And then they can start to think of different ways to do that. And then you're sharing as a class. Oh, I used a number line to show repeated subtraction. I drew an array. I flipped it around and used multiplication to solve it. I skip counted using the multiplication mashup. It's a great discussion with your kids. Another helpful tip would be to create an anchor chart for this to put it up so students can constantly see and refer to the information. An anchor chart, honestly, that looks just like what we have here. Okay, that would be a great anchor chart to show. All right, so I hope that this made sense for you today. And if you're like, man, Miss McCarthy, I could really use some more support with this or my students could definitely, um, do you, could you teach them? I'm about to actually break down some next steps that you can take to support your students, so stay tuned. I hope you found this episode to be helpful. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. It's an easy way to support the content that I bring to you for free on YouTube. If you're a teacher or a parent, especially in Florida, you'll definitely want to check out McCarthyMathAcademy.com. Here is where I offer fast math freebies, including a playlist of fast math style problems and video lessons to support your teaching. For those ready to dive deeper, check out Taken on the Best, a monthly membership packed with video lessons, student guides, extra practice, error analysis videos, math tasks, mini assessments, and much more, which are all strategically aligned to Florida's best standards. With three levels, bronze, silver, and gold, you can choose the support that best fits your needs to promote student growth and skill mastery. Would you like to take taking on the best for a test drive? You can sample one standard per grade to find the right plan for you. Do that by simply requesting a free trial. And if you're gearing up for the final fast math assessment of the school year, Definitely check out Taking on the Fast, a 15-day countdown series with video lessons and fast-style math problems. Start with a sneak peek of day one, and when you're ready, you can make a one-time purchase. And if you're thinking about the gold plan for Taking on the Best, good news, Taking on the Fast is included in your membership. While many of my followers are in Florida, I know that there are teachers and parents everywhere looking for support. That's why I created McCarthy Math 155 with 155 video lessons for each grade level, third, fourth, and fifth. You can also sign up for a free trial to McCarthy Math 155 to explore it before signing up for a monthly membership. And finally, if you've enjoyed my math music videos on YouTube, you can also jam out to ad-free versions on my website. You can find all the links below and please feel free to email me with any questions that you have. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Until then, get out there and make the world a little bit brighter in your own special way. See you next time.